till the game is over, please, 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 please. Everything is so, fine. So, well, I want also to congratulate Langen on the uh, third place of the of the cup, and also yes. if Akaren wins, I mean they have won the cup already twice. That would be the third time for them. So, uh, next game coming up, as we just mentioned, is Australia against uh, Switzerland. Yes, exactly. Dennis Frank says it right. Uh, don't I play underwater rugby? Um, okay, um, our hearts are uh, with uh, Australia and with uh, Switzerland. Uh, we love uh, the Swiss team, uh, their Kraken uh, league uh, they uh, invented for uh, players can uh, uh, apply their uh, single players and they put together teams, which is, I think, a great idea to develop on the water rugby. And uh, we also are in, uh, totally in love with the uh, uh, Australian players coming from far, far away. They're still uh, heavily in jet lag. Um, we talked to Ricardo, he said uh, yesterday he was uh, almost dizzy in the pool, didn't know where it's up and down. So uh, they're having trouble, some of yes, them with the check. It's a lag. great effort from the Australian players and we with bo wish both teams uh, uh, the best of uh, luck. Yeah, they are yeah, playing now. Luck. We are seeing the match here for the 9th and the 10th place. So this is uh, Wales from Australia in blue and Zurich from Switzerland in white. And uh, perfect on the water rugby. Uh, and here we go. Swiss is attacking. Swiss, Swiss players are attacking uh, the uh, Australian basket, but the forechecking of an Australians um, uh, recover the ball. And uh, they are going now uh, over the close side through the pool in the direction of uh, the Swiss basket and uh, um, trying to build up their attack. But the forechecking of uh, Switzerland uh, is quite good. Um, you as you might know, uh, in the Swiss team is uh, um, Thorsten Stanchus. Um, a uh, German player who is uh, playing a lot with the uh, Swiss team. And now the Swiss uh, stop the attack of uh, uh, Australia and uh, recover the ball, but uh, there's a heavy fighting one-on-one uh, -on -one and the ball was outside of the, play, uh, the game uh, area and it's a free throw against uh, Switzerland. So uh, I think both teams are uh, on, the, on the same table level here again. And uh, uh, I couldn't uh, uh, tell which uh, team has an advantage here. Um, so uh, Australia coming in, uh, uh, there was a, uh, oh, the player in the open side didn't see the ball coming from, uh, from his teammate on the closed side. And uh, a Swiss player recovered it and is going for a counter attack, but stopped uh, in their own half by the forechecking of Australia. Uh, they haven't even reached the, the middle of the pool yet and are stopped heavily by the forechecking uh, of Australia. Now they are through, but the player doesn't have enough air. He has to go up. He's going down again, coming on the goalie of Australia from above, uh, already on the close side. And another Australian player is, uh, uh, Swiss player is waiting. So uh, Switzerland is attacking the Australian basket. Um, we have a, a cluster, the ball falls down. Um, still in the pool area of uh, uh, Australia and they managed to break free but uh, as soon as they uh, swam uh, a little bit they were under heavy attack by uh, uh, the Swiss players. It's uh, the same uh, game we saw before in the last two games, heavy forechecking in the middle field perfect on the water rugby. They stay down in the water. Almost all the players are down on the bottom and uh, they go heavy for uh, uh, each other and try to recover the ball and uh, um, to, to have an, an, an advantage over the, the other team by uh, uh, doing a fast break. But uh, it's almost impossible to do a fast break if the forechecking is uh, that heavy here. Uh, a lot of players the defense parameters of both teams uh, are extended right until the middle of the pool on the bottom. And uh, now Australia is in the half of uh, Switzerland and uh, they're taking their time building up their attack pattern to put pressure on the uh, basket um, of uh, uh, the uh, Australians. 
and uh, they're coming from the open side and the player from Australia has uh, uh, had a good uh, a starting point but uh, there was a call from the referee pushing without ball and uh, so the whole attack of uh, Australia is interrupted and Switzerland uh, on their part have now a chance to uh, um, to go for uh, to go for the uh, uh, goal of Australia. Uh, right now, I have uh, Tarkan uh, with me. Hello, Tarkan. Hello, hello, uh, everybody. From the Turkish team and players from Turkey are with us around us. So. Uh, uh, we're here in the game, Tarkan of Australia against uh, Switzerland. Uh, we just saw your uh, game uh, uh, before. Uh, it was a very beautiful rugby you played there. We were yeah. just uh, fascinated by the style uh, in, in, in it. It, it, it. You could show it to other teams so they could learn how to play underwater rugby. Yeah, it thank was you. beautiful. Oh. Now we have a, a hard pressure of the Swiss team pushing on the Australian basket, uh, but the defense is quite up to it. Yeah, Swiss teams uh, this season is looking more hard, uh, more strong, uh, more powerful. Welcome Tarkan here and the Turkish team. Hey, hey everybody, it's so <laughs> cool to have you with us. Thank you very much for playing this underwater rugby you do. Great to have you with us. Thank you. So Tarkan, yes, uh, what do you think about this, uh, uh, these two uh, uh, teams? About Wales and Zurich? Yes. And I think Zurich and I how I, how I say to you, and looking more and powerful. Yes. And but I believe the Wales is can change anytime. Yes. It's suddenly everything. And also you know it and the one Turkish player is playing there yeah. in the Wales team. Uh, his name is Ekin, Ekin Koç. Okay. He's also uh, one of the best players in Turkey and a good attacker. Yes. And if he can find uh, any opportunity, uh, he can just score. He I will believe. score, yeah. Yeah. But it's, uh, I think it's impressive to see Australia in their first international tournament and doing quite well. Uh, they are not overrun, they are self-reliant. You know what happened? Do you have any information about uh, it? About Australia? I, I can tell you the story. Of Australia? Yeah, because the some um, Turkish man, his name is uh, Artun Johnson Urs. Okay. And now he's living th in the Australia and he's beginning to do, uh, first of all, he's helping to uh, one team. Yes. And after that, he begin to show the everything about underwater rugby in the Australia. And Australia rugby is getting growing up yeah, with, the, are, with the Turkish people. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's so cool. <laughs> I think I heard a lot, uh, Colombians and Turkish people all over the world founding clubs yeah. and bringing, Colum uh, bringing uh, underwater rugby to yeah. into the world. Yeah. It's, it's quite great. Uh, a few years b uh, before, and underwater rugby just belonged to the Scandinavian exactly. countries. Exactly, you know, Germany and Scandinavia. Europe, but yeah. now the s uh, that sport is global sports, all the world yes. is playing. And uh, as I said before in the, in the live chat, uh, I think the, the most promising countries and growing countries are Turkey and Colombia right now. Yeah. And this is where uh, the future of uh, water rugby is happening, yeah. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. And uh, the old countries, let's say old countries like uh, uh, Germany and Norway, really have to uh, learn from uh, from you from Turkey and Colombia and probably Australia and Singapore tour how to uh, uh, organize and yeah. how to, to build the future of underwater rugby. It's a great thing you're doing and thank you very much for it, Tarkan. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, I think it's, it's great to open up the world and uh, Ricardo told me, um, do you know Ricardo? He's a Colombian player playing for uh, Australia. Yeah, Australia yes. yes, yeah, I know. And uh, he told me uh, Singapore wants to come to yeah. the Champions Cup now, next and year. What, do you know, can you see that, what I told you? And now is probably his Ekin. Ah. <laughs> what I say to you? <laughs> what I say to you? <laughs> so, now <laughs> Ekin. <laughs> so, if you want to have the lottery numbers of next year, yeah. ask uh, ask Harkan. He can predict the future. <laughs> yeah, I told you. Very nice. Yeah, he told if me. If somewhere the plane, the Turkish was a little bit smarter than you. Yeah, yeah. well, that's easy. <laughs> I, we know yeah, that this. That is what you said. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will not disagree. <laughs> Well, I have a high level of intelligence, but uh, compared to Tarkan and you, Jörg, uh, I'm uh, just uh, 
uh, in the shadow. So Tarkan is really happy to have a player he knows, a Turkish player who scored yeah. in this uh, game. And uh, so it's 1-0 for uh, uh, um, uh, Australia. And we have a timeout uh, probably from uh, Zurich. And uh, let's see what's in the live chat. Uh, okay, there's a question uh, wh while we stay in the game and uh, we stay with the crowd. So Tarkan, tell us uh, something about your club. Um, you showed me yesterday, you showed me your... Yeah, uh, my club's you, overview, yeah. yeah. Overview of your uh, teams. Yeah. And uh, as I posted on Facebook, I couldn't believe what I saw there. <laughs> it's uh, just too many players. And are you sure uh, you didn't double it? Just double it by copy and paste? Yeah. <laughs> no. it, it's 200 players? Yeah, around, yeah. Wow. Just on the child. And and on every age level. So U15. Yeah. Under, under 24, under 21, under 18, under 15, under 13. And the woman. And the um, woman main group. Woman uh, under 21, under 18, under 15 is going on like this. It's, it's really impressive. Uh, and uh, um, you in your club, you're behind the organization. You do the actual club uh, uh, structuring and uh, everything that is... Uh, uh, related to the teams, yeah. it's, it's your uh, thing you do. Yeah. Is it is it your main uh, uh, thing you do? Do you have a, a another profession, or is it underwater rugby your? Uh, My uh profession is now underwater rugby. Wow. I'm earning money and I'm. Uh, Going on in my life with the underwater rugby right now. So and actually, um, my profession is aquaculture engineer. Okay. But a few times I've tried to work the, in the fishery <laughs> farm, but <laughs> <laughs> so boring, you know, with the fish. <laughs> uh, I'm diving, I'm checking the fish, but <laughs> it's not but funny. You stay in the water, so you stay in the water, but uh, you're uh, uh, playing uh, underwater rugby right now. Yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, um, Probably after this game, we have uh, 20 seconds, 25 seconds left in this first half here uh, of uh, this, uh, uh, um, uh, Australia against uh, uh, Switzerland. Look, again, again, again is coming. And the time is ticking, and uh, um, this is, uh, um, I think both teams are quite on the same level, but uh, Australia now has the advantage to go into the second half with a 1 0. Actually, Zurich clubs is coming all tournaments and Zuri yes. has got a lot of experience than yes and uh, to the Australian teams but and they have uh, even have two German players Thorsten Sanchez is playing yes, with the also Thorsten is so nice player and so nice coach yes he's so nice guy I, lo I love him yeah he's very experienced and he's yeah. really funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, what I told you uh, if there is even one Turkish player into the one some team can be happened anytime. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Always good for a surprise. Turkish players yeah. in the in the game. So Tarkan, back to uh, uh, your club and uh, the way uh, you work. Um, we know, for example, uh, in Colombia, the the coaches are paid by the club, yeah. so uh, they get money from uh, um, the the players who pay the club and the pool times. How do you structure your coaches and uh, the way uh, the teams are coached and yeah. your work? Yeah, um, actually, we are finding the, this money from the, our the small players. Okay. Uh, all parents should pay the money into our club. Okay. And we have the budget, and actually, we are paying the so big money for the pool. Oh, using, really? Yes, using the pool because every day, and around four, five hours, or six hours every day. You every, have a pool day, time every yes. day, five to six hours? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Five or six hours. Okay. And therefore, we are paying so big money, around five thousand euro, every month. Every month. Every month. Yeah. You kidding me? No, I'm seriously. Fi around five thousand euros, we are giving, paying for um, to. To have pool. the pool time. Yeah. Underwater Rugby World, do you listen to this? Um, we know that uh, um, Australia is paying $100 a, a month or for pool time, but $5,000 uh, yeah. a month for your pool time, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot of money. That's why we are working so much. That's why we have so big uh, family and yes. so much so you support by the base. You supported by the base of your uh, team, yeah. and uh, they they raise the money so you can pay the pool time. Yeah. Do you also pay your coaches, or do they? Yeah, I'm, I'm paying also coaches wow. who, who are um, helping to me. Yes. The last year, for example, Marta Hakan, 
and a few more players that uh, work with me as a trainer. Yes. I paid them. And also this season, I'm paying to them also uh, Hakan and Merter okay. as a uh, head coach in the, my main team. Now it's Hakan is head coach into the, our okay. club. Okay, wow. And I'm I'm working with the child, as you know, in the yeah, Oberhausen. Yeah. We've been in Oberhausen with the yeah. uh, uh, Open German uh, Youth uh, Championship. It was yeah. great to have you here and all your teams there. there were, you you contributed so much to the atmosphere. It was really great to have you there. Yeah. And so you work with the youth, Hakan, with the with the grown-ups. Um, and uh, tell me, do you do you have plans to to um, to raise money from uh, other sources than the the base of uh, the players, for example, sponsors, or is there a chance? Yeah, to respond in, in to find the sponsors is really so so hard. Yes, it we is. We can find. And we are why to why do you think, Hagan, why do you think it's so hard? We have a beautiful full sport. Uh, it's, it's, we have the means for the live transmission. If people see it, they are fascinated. Why is it so hard for us to find sponsors? You know, there is two different kind of the sponsors. One of them and try do sponsors for the reclam. Yeah. You know? And, but we haven't any like this re reclam or something because we are playing under the water and, and anybody can see the out of the water. True. And and also, and when the, we when we do the attack on the basket and a lot of player there and around yes, sometimes yes, it's twelve all yes. players there and we can, anybody cannot f uh, follow, follow the follow ball the game. yes and this is not good this is not um, enjoyable you know for the for the watchers yes, yes. therefore we can show them um, the reclam or the sponsor something like this yes but other kind of sponsor who has the so big money yes and we are going them and we are telling let's help us maybe they not pay the all our uh, budget but they give the small money and they are helping like this Yes, yes, it is difficult. I think uh, um, with the live stream we have here on the EuroLeague, we do a big step uh, to open up uh, uh, underwater rugby for the public. And uh, I also think, and I'm working on it, the, the comments uh, we do here are explaining the game uh, to the people watching, because if you're not underwater rugby player, it's difficult to follow this game. Uh, because it's very fast and, uh, like you said, around the basket, uh, s so much things are happening. So I think good comments uh, um, done with a lot of emotion pull the watchers into the game and uh, make a change there. Yeah. So, um, and your club is, is uh, only one club of several clubs in Turkey, or are you the main? Actually, we begin the, the I begin the underwater I played underwater rugby around 2002, 2003, and that time there was just only one club. It's in Izmir, it's it's amazing, uh, Tarkan. It's it's only 13 years ago. Yeah. And what you did. Yeah. It's amazing. You know that. Yeah. Okay. You know and that. Actually, um, I begin to play 2003, and we went with the national team in the Bari 2007. <laughs> yeah. And in this uh, in this year, uh, I my university finished and I begin to work in university as a pool manager and that's time I got a lot of uh, opportunity that I used it and I I did the university club and a few years later we were champion oh. in Turkey and Turkey national yes, championship yes, yes, yes. and in Ekin again can you see that and he <laughs> gave us so, so nice pass yes and then and we found a lot of people who want to play down the water rugby and, and that time uh, we did a lot of different club you know um, we are using just only one pool in izmir one and pool for all the the clubs yeah one pool and four line four line who has the deep side oh four really? line. okay everything is happened into these four lines now wow and now uh, izmir big big municipal and doing this their own pool yes and i can imagine what will happen in the future because we did everything uh, just on one, just pool. On yeah. one pool so if you have more space if you have more pool yeah uh, you know how many teams there is in Turk uh, izmir no right? i have no idea but around 10. well i have no idea just tell me around 10. 10. yeah around <laughs> so Wow. Okay, we will see a lot in the future. And I wanna show. Um, I wanna try to do. I'm um, an example, and they have to do what I'm doing also. 
yeah. if they do like this, if somebody can earn the money from the underwater yeah. rugby, yes. they, they begin to do the, like a profession. Yes. And that time is underwater rugby and growing up, grow, every day is growing up. So this is a really nice system uh, you do there. How, how is it uh, that Ismir is so strong uh, in, in Aiken, underwater? Aiken, Aiken again here. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, we will Aiken. see. Whoa, 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 Aiken, 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 hi, Aiken. Aiken. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the future we will see a lot of uh, Turkish, uh, like the Colombian players, we see in a lot of uh, other teams playing, we will see a lot of Turkish players playing in different teams all yeah. around the world yeah. and uh, they they spread their knowledge and um, actually knowledge how do you um, gain knowledge about underwater rugby you're organizing workshops and but um, but the, the style you play is I'm, I'm very good i can't uh, tell first of all about us about me and i begin to play underwater rugby with mr levin chavash and he's the really nice guy and the great guy and this is so important for us in Turkey. Okay. And then when, when I separated my team and when I did the, our club, and we watched the whole game, but we not just on the following the game. I'm telling to also that my club players, the young players, when sh we uh, begin to sh uh, watch the games, first of all we find uh, to one team the who which numbers playing goalkeeper. Which okay. number is playing the okay, defender, which number is playing the forward. You look for and the best players. Yeah, just only one team. Mm. For example, first of all, we have to um, begin to watch just only blue team. Okay. And I'm giving the homework to my players. Really? Yeah. With the videos? I say that this video, this YouTube games, you have to watch. And uh, next training, you have to bring to me which number play the goalkeeper, which number play the defender, which number play the attacker. And then... Second homework, I said, what they are doing the defense position. Okay. And another homework, what they are doing to when they did an um, attack. Wow. Okay. And actually, we did like this. And but 2011, when we go to Helsinki for World Championship, and we met uh, with Stefan Jankdal, and he came. We talked so much, and he helped us. And then I call him. And I said, I can pay the, your flight tickets and you can come, come to over, okay, yeah, Turkey okay. and you can stay with me, you can eat with me. And he came and he helped us around, uh, around 10 days. Okay. And you know, in that time, we were champion. <laughs> and as so my it was a big knowledge push. Yeah. yeah. And then also, uh, I invited Thorsten one time. Okay. In and then uh, last year, I did so big summer camp and Iver, Mikel, Erika, yes, yes, yes. Anne Sophie, and all the best players came. And yes, uh, last summer also I did again okay. one more time. And you know, the, that's time we are sharing all knowledge. Yes, yes. So you pool the knowledge, you use it for you, but you also share it with the yeah. others. And my team, and that's the important point is condition. And all new beginners should see him so much. Okay. Because uh, I'm telling all time just on one important point. If we do the tactics, we yeah. need two important points. One condition, other one is technique. Yeah. If you haven't the any uh, individual technique, that's about um, that's meaning is holding the ball, yes. keeping molded, yes. the good passing. If you haven't individual uh, tactics, and if you haven't the, the condition, we can't do the team tactics. Exactly. That's the next step then. Yes. So that's the base. For example. We are doing to, together the tactics, and I said, "Let's go to Wolf and stay the, uh, lie the basket under the basket. Yeah. I will bring to you the ball. Oh, yes. If I haven't the condi or if you haven't any and enough I cannot condition, wait long enough. you yeah. can't wait to make that. Yeah. If I haven't the individual techniques, yeah. I can't bring the ball. I can't give the pass. Yeah. Therefore, and uh, this and our trainings is the." Dep um, b depend on this um, two basic, uh, basic factors. factors. Okay. First of all, we are beginning to uh, condition, and after that, techniques. Then, uh, of course, they have to uh, they have to feel uh, enjoyable in the underwater rugby. Therefore, Very all yes. ender, uh, ending the training, we are giving the ball. They are trying to play the game or something, something like this. Yeah, to have fun. Yeah, yeah to have fun. And also. And uh, my players are so uh, lucky because 
I'm giving so much time and attention to them. Therefore, Absolutely. for example, I'm preparing the international organization. I'm taking them and going to out of the country, uh, as you know, in Oberhausen like yes. this. And next yes. uh, time, it also we will come and the more with more club. Okay. Yeah. Wow, well, looking forward to that. And <laughs> probably 200. Uh, 21, two under 18, and two under 15, and even the <laughs> women teams. And I'm p I'm planning around six or eight different teams. I will come there. Wow, wow! Next time I came around 45 players. <laughs> and, and last time, I'm sorry, last time. Yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, do you remember? Yeah, they yeah, gave yeah, to me yeah, some yeah. big tents. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, you and next time, probably I will come around 16 or 17. You stayed place. on the soccer field in really big yeah. tents and we were like yeah. a really big family. So, what's interesting for me too, how do you uh, acquire new players, young players? How do they come to you? Actually, when I opened my club first yeah. time, we begin uh, playing just only with uh, seven players. Seven? Seven. We, we begin the seven. I will come. I will come. We can meet it in the hostel. We begin the seven players, and if somebody wanna do the new club, this the, uh, the important point is they need the first of all um, the main team. Okay. They should to show, and they can find the friends or something, and they can do the main team, and after that they can bring to do, and they can try to find the child. For example, what I'm doing, we have a big pool in Izmir, yeah. like a university pool, and they have a swimming course. When the end of the swimming course, I'm giving them my paper about the club, okay. all parents, okay. and I'm showing them what I'm doing, where we are going out of the country, what we are doing. Winning yeah. tournaments yes. and, and, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. parents, oh, okay, <laughs> my son can do underwater rugby. But you know what's the important point? We are not just only trainer. We are like a life coach. Yes, I understand. And we caring them they, about their food, their sleep, their uh, school. Yeah. And we are talking about everything. And for example, in my club, and uh, who who playing uh, into the my club, yeah. they have to take all lessons. Uh, eight percent successful. Wow. Yeah, th this rules into yes. my team. Okay. Wow. If if some lessons get down, yeah, uh, they shouldn't come to training. They have to stay at home. They have to lesson, and after that, when they pass this lesson, yeah, after that. So school first, education first, and yes. then they are allowed. Well, yeah. th that's a broad spectrum you have. And yes. it, it's 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 more like a bigger extension of a family you know, you're doing that. Yes. You know why? Because. If they are not successful in the lessons in the, their school, and the parents begin to think, they begin yes. thinking, oh, don't they are go going to the pool, yes. then don't you shouldn't go to any more rugby, or and they separate the their time, they their free time, the special lessons or something course, a okay. different course. Okay. Therefore, I said everybody should uh, read the book. That's so important. Read the book. Yes. And the successful on the lesson, the eighty percent. And, and of course, the parents would like so much this one because you know what the important point. For example, if you have a child, and and that that child and coming to my club, and child wants if child wants to come to my club, play the underwater rugby, he can do that. Not your pressure or not my pressure. Yeah, this is so important. Yes, yes. And this is this is the law, and. I'm just using this. That's love, yeah, you okay, know, understand. because you are father. Yeah. When you say something to him, he is thinking, mm, uh, my father, father said me like this. Yes, I yes. don't want to do like this. But if he wants to play with me, yes, he should do what I said to him. Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's the deal. That's the yes. deal. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm using this. Therefore, actually, I'm preparing, and uh, this is not surprise, you know. Hmm. This is not surprise. I want to show the one picture about the European Junior Championship and this is not surprise the winning because we uh, I totally see that <laughs> we begin to play we begin the preparing ourselves a few years ago I will show up to you the, the, the different thing I see in what you explain here in, in the Germany we have uh, kids coming to us and they uh, underwater rugby is a plus for you it's the start yes, yes. you know 
these pictures for uh, three years before. Three years before. And all national team players is here. All your national team under, players? Under 21. Okay, can I hold this in the camera? Yeah, here. Yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> Very good. So this is this is amazing. Within three years. Yeah. Wow. Um, and th the the thing is, and everything you explain, and your system really starts in the beginning with a family, with uh, having players that are de dedicated their life to underwater rugby and structure yes. their life around underwater yeah. rugby. If you want to be successful, you have to plan everything. Exactly, and uh, you, <laughs> you have to write, you have to plan. Yeah, and you have to be smart. Yes, you you saw also my computer. Yeah. I'm living with my computer. I'm writing everything. I'm planning everything. Everything is on the my exit life. Exit okay. life. Wow, this is just amazing, and uh, I'm I'm really impressed with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I'll, I always <laughs> like to t like to talk to you because the the way uh, the fresh uh, thinking is coming from your direction is impressive. Sorry, Björk. Yes.